day sweet sweet souls welcome back i hope that you are good and that you've had a good few days so i'm sorry that it took me a little bit longer to get a public reading out to you this week um i went away to the london tarot conference um on thursday um and then i was away till tuesday so i've only really just started getting back um into readings this week um so that's why there's a bit of a delay on the public reading so i hope that you've been enjoying your cards of the day uh, the conference was epic um met so many wonderful people wonderful speakers and um, some absolutely phenomenal creators out there uh, yasmin westwood she did all the enchanted tarot um we we enjoyed a cocktail together um, and then the price of it shook us in the in the um in the menu it said oh this cocktail is 13 pounds and we thought well why not we're in london and then they added tax and vat all sorts of things so it was the most expensive cocktail and i can't rate it it, it wasn't very nice actually uh, but we had a bit of a blast but yeah if you haven't looked at uh she does like the enchanted soul tarot and uh, she did a hummingbird oracle enchanted dreams um so yeah just um go and have a look at her she's she's really cool so we're actually going to use two new decks today and I'm going on to completely polar opposites. So the first one is this beautiful rose tarot. Uh, the guy, Nigel Jackson, he was one of the speakers there and I fell in love with this deck. Firstly, as soon as I saw the box and then secondly, once I saw the artwork, I really, really fell in love with this deck. So we're going to use that one uh, for deck number one. Deck number two, we're going the complete opposite end. Um, and we're going to use the beautiful Arisha Tarot. This is, you know, two of my new decks. Um, the Arishas speak very highly to me with my partner being from Brazil. Um, there's a lot of... Um, energies around that and around around brazil and um, but it's a very very interesting deck um really drawn to the colors really drawn to the imagery so we're going to use that for deck number two so if that didn't make your mind up here we go deck number two deck number one and deck number two um, and we are doing i wrote it down what they really want you to know so what your person wants you to know Deck number one, deck number two. We're going to go into their energy. We're going to see what spirits say and see what the cards say. Those of you that don't know, deck number one, by the way. Um, those of you that don't know, I am clairaudient. I hear spirit. I'm also clairvoyant and I see them. When I hear them, I hear them as if me and you are talking and communicating. And I will often get messages in different languages. I was telling people that at the weekend. They're like, really? I said, yeah, it does happen. I'll just hear the different languages. And I have to, um, when I do private readings, I have to say, what I'm hearing um, and you'll all come back to me and say oh yeah this means this and that means that and I haven't got a clue because I've never spoke I can speak a tiny bit of Portuguese uh more tiny bit more Portuguese than Spanish um though Spanish was always my better language so let's go I want you to just think about your person as I pull it in that collective energy of you all um, and if you need me for private readings, just email mrlovetaro at gmail.com. Go to the website, the contact form. Though some people are saying that contact form's not quite working all the time. Or DM me, Instagram or Facebook. Okay, let's go. What is your person really wanting to tell you? What do they want you to know? Oh, we're scooting around everywhere, aren't we? Ooh. Okay, so the first thing I'm getting is a song. I get a lot of songs of the Claire audience as well. Now, I don't remember who sang it. It's a female singer. And I would say it sounds like Avril Lavigne, but I could be wrong. I could be, I could be extremely wrong because obviously they don't say this is the artist. This is a song. You get the lyrics. And the lyrics that are coming through is um, something like you make me shiver or I want to shiver. You did the shiver, do 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 deeper so i'm hoping one of you will know who it is if you do know who it is write it in the comments share the link um that song coming up first and foremost for you so when we know that this is what your person wants to tell you i will just go with the original lyric that spirit were giving me about shivering now i know and you guys know that when you are spiritually aligned when you're saying things that are of truth you will often get goose pimples angel bumps i used to call them and you would get angel bumps um, over the connection, over what is being said to you, over the messages that spirit are communicating. And if it is your person, it is an energy alignment. So when you do get those shivers, might be the cranberries actually. 
probably not but it might have been but when you do get those shivers this is you and your person aligning and that is why that message is coming through first and foremost regardless of who the singer was or the specific lyrics your you and your person's energy is aligning and you give them the goosebumps and you give them the shivers and if you've ever sat there out of the blue and you've suddenly felt that really like feeling kind of going up all through your spine all around your head kundalini rising between the both of you the sexual energy the power energy the basis of this connection your person is really really feeling the strong energy between you both okay and that's before we've even looked at the cards so let's go into these and see what's going on so there are two sides happening here the first side of this is your person is probably being a little bit sticky with you, that they haven't given you much commitment, they've just been a little bit blasé, a little bit here, a little bit there, um, they haven't given you much direction or faith or hope at this point in time. That's one side of things. Now, the opposite side of it is really interesting. The bottom three cards are major arcana and they're all really, really positive. So where you are at the moment with your person not really giving you what they want uh, what you want sorry they would want to tell you that they are actually emotionally invested in this and they want to see where it goes so i'm going to read across and i'm also going to read down so we're going to do a like a, a sudoku okay so let's start off with the the flip side so you have i'll show you the cards because you'll like them the two of swords the ten of wands and the eight of swords okay all swords no oh no sorry ten of wands sorry two swords one ones so they're very much in their mind over this situation as well they are feeling quite burdened by the situation with you so their thoughts are really kicking their ass at this moment in time they've got this this element of fear and i don't what well, they say to you i don't know what to do about this situation reasons why they don't know what to do about the situation is when we look at the major arcana so your person's probably never had these strong intense emotions for anyone before we know from the song that spirit was saying at the start they shiver the spiritual connection between the two of them and it probably just puts a little bit of fear in them because they don't know what to do about it all and that is why they're burdened and that is why they're stuck and that is why they're not making a choice on it all so if we're going to look at the energy of the cards and the imagery on this, we've got the sun and moon, the masculine, the feminine. We're never uh, gender specific or sexually orientated on this channel, but this will signify your person and you. OK, the person you're thinking of and you. And it's like the cross between the two of you. And I used to go to a pub called the Cross Keys and Spirit really, really just showed me that. It's like the key is the the success in Lenoma. The key is that success, it is the path, it is excellent, it is victory. And the two of you having your cross, cross paths at the moment, okay? So there is hope, there is ideas that this can work out. There is in, is ising, there is a cross of your energies and there is an alignment, but it's just this kind of, it's taking a bit of time and a little bit of a delay, okay? Um, whilst they're fapping around and not giving you an answer. The Ten of Wands on here, we feel like they've been, we being me and my spirit guides, feel like your person has been fighting this connection for quite some time, that they haven't really been giving you the energy that you want or almost, um, spirit saying that they haven't been given, you haven't given, they haven't been giving you their approval. Sorry, my words got a bit mixed up. They haven't been giving you their approval. So you guys are feeling a little bit stuck on it all. With the Eight of Swords over here, we've got Juliet. I believe that is Juliet looking over the balcony saying, Romeo, Romeo, where are, where art thou? And it's like your person hasn't 100% showed up for this connection at the moment. That is one side. When we're looking into the wise, as I said to you, they're a bit freaked out because the connection is really intense. They have got very strong emotions for you. With that, with the, the lovers, the major arcana over here, again, the masculine and feminine energy, the wedding, the partnership, the divine union. They have these really, really strong feelings for you. There's possibly spirit is saying over here, a karmic energy between you guys. So even if you're twin flames or higher vibrational soulmates, you've probably had a sense of karmic energy before. You've probably lived past lives. Um, and if you do need a past life reading or a past life clearing, give me a shout. We can have a look at getting that energy transformed, revoking with counting and renouncing that between you all um but this is part of the reason that they'll be freaking out past life energy as well um 
how karmic energy works in a past life. Uh, an example would be on one lifetime, it's a bit dark, but on one lifetime, you'd be the murderer. The other lifetime, you would be the victim. And when you come back round, your roles reverse. So anything that you're experiencing, it's possible that your person has experienced that in a past life. Um, anywhere that they're stuttering, there'd probably be a reason for that. For example, they went off to war um, and left you behind and you couldn't communicate with them or write to them, etc, etc. So that energy coming up as to why they are standing still. Your person isn't aware why they're standing still. They don't know why because they have got these really strong emotions for you and really strong feelings. And what's really important and Spirit saying imperative that you know is that the love is real. It's a real, real divine connection. The other two major cards that you got were the chariot and the world. Okay, so love is chariot and world. Really, really positive really positive energy the world being a successful outcome it's a union it's a coming together it's everything is planned and worked out in your favor exactly where you want it to be and again an energy aligning okay and the chariot will talk about you guys heading towards your goals reaching what you want to reach yes there's been a bit of a fight yes there's been a bit of a battle but you are progressing forward and the chariot will often speak about um the greek mythology of the sun energy and the moon energy and the the, the gods uh the god and the goddess i can't specifically remember their names that drove the chariots and again this symbolizes the masculine and feminine energy so that was really really deep so in short what they really want you to know at the moment here we go. This is a shortened version of everything I just spoke about. They would want you to know that perhaps they're not handling this situation in the best way at the moment, that perhaps they're being a little bit um, running away from their emotions, running away from their feelings, but it's because they're scared of their connection because it's really intense. But they have got emotions here. They do really fancy you. They, they, I'd even go as far to say some of them have fallen in love with you. They've got hope for the future that you two will have a coming together, a joining. Um, and it's almost a case of it doesn't matter how long it takes, we can get there in the end. And that is what your person would want you to know. So with all this energy up here, with this um, this very much in the mind, remember, they're very much in their mind over the situation. With that, that energy will counteract to go on here. How the energy counteracts, stuff that you could do. Remember, with more divine connections, I speak about helix um, and how your energies are entwined with one another. If you're working very much on air energy, which is very much the mind, it's the spirit, it's the communication. If they're working on that and in fear, you can counteract that by really grounding yourself into the earth energy because anything going through you will go through them. Because Neville Goddard, he was a guru of manifestation who said everything on your outside world is a reflection of your inside world. So if they are very much in the mind, energy and not giving you what you want it's really important that you guys keep in the earth energy lots of root vegetables lots of vegetables that grow in the earth maybe making this massive casserole is a really good idea um going you know people say go out in nature but it's always really good for that element of grounding when your person is in that mind energy um also we talk about drinking natural spring waters just to cleanse your energies a little bit if you keep grounded and um, you can work with herbs Lots of herbal teas is a really good idea. You can work with crystals. Anything that is earth-based energy will help bring your person out of their mind energy and help this move towards these longer-term goals. And if you need more information on that, you give me a shout and we can book your private reading. MrLoveTaro at gmail.com. And that's step number one. So I hope you enjoyed the new cards. I think they are pretty, pretty cool, aren't they? I really like them. Really, really like them. Okay, deck number one. Right, let's just switch up the energy and go to deck number two. So I'm actually just going to do a bit of a spray. I noticed my spray bottle was on the floor. Um, we're going to just use a bit of Palo Santo. Reason why is because we're using the Orisha Tarot and obviously it's South American. Palo Santo is a wood from South America, um, but it's very good for cleansing energy. So when you're doing two decks in a row, um, I like to have a spruce in between them. So what we're doing is what your person really wants you to know. Um, as always, it works on the collective energy between you all. Um, a bit how you worked out the average of mass at school. You pick all the numbers and then you, I think you, I can't remember, add them all together and then divide it by however many things there were. It works like that, basically, on a collective energy. is all of your mutual energy involved in one deck. Uh, can you just think about your person, the person that you want to know about as they go into their energy? Let's just do two of them. 
and we will see where we end up. Okay, what does your person really want you to know? Let's have a look. Do ba do ba do. Oh, they're so. They, these are these cards are just fabulous, aren't they? I think they. I love them. What do they want you to know? What's really important that they tell you? Lovers. I'll read you the cards actually. So you got the Two of Pentacles. You got the Lovers. You got the Queen of Cups. That's a good start. You got the Six. Oh, six of Swords. You've got the Eight of Pentacles, and let's finish off with the Knight of Cups. Somebody at this weekend at the London Tarot Conference, I don't know, I don't, my riders aren't in front of me. Um, my riders I just use for myself. But I looked at the Knight of Cups and they said, have you ever seen the manhood on the Knight of Cups? I said, no. And then she showed me it and I was like, oh my goodness, that Knight of Cups is actually a little bit sexual. And that is where I'm going to go, first and foremost, with this Knight of Cups. Now, he doesn't look anything like the Rider weight. He doesn't look anything like that specific card. Um, but this is a card of someone that is making moves towards you and being in love with you. So the first thing they, spirit, they would want you to know and your person would want you to know is that your person that you are thinking of has very, very strong emotions for you. And the feelings are real. And we can also see that with the lovers over here. Two strong cards of emotions. Your person feels emotionally connected to you they feel the butterflies in their tummy they feel the love that you two share um, if you're not in contact your person is missing you grieving you wanting to communicate with you that is all there there is a very strong energy between the two of you the other thing to note about these two cards is the self-confidence that comes from this, okay? So your person might have been on a little bit of rocky territory with their confidence between you guys. Normally, um, as a collective energy, your person has been quite confident with themselves and the situation between you both. But that has been shaken in recent times, okay? It has been a bit shaken in recent times. The reason why is because your person has caught serious feels for you. And where's our Queen of Cups? They've caught serious feels for you. They've got serious emotions for you. And so they've got a little bit overwhelmed with the connection. And with that has affected their confidence. Firstly, in a sense that they are a little bit frightened of rejection, Okay, that's coming through, Spirit saying that really clearly. Their confidence is affected because they're a little bit scared that you'd reject them. Secondly, they know that perhaps their actions haven't married up to what you wanted them to be for this connection. And so they don't know how you would handle the situation if they come full guns blazing and express their emotions to you. Now, it does look like that is going to happen with the Knight of Cups popping in um, and with the Queen of Cups as well and the Lovers, there's a really strong love bond between the two of you and it does look like your person is going to communicate to you and say that they have these really strong feelings for you and that is what they would want you to know right off the bat, okay? Right off the bat, they want you to know, I have feelings, I'm going to come to you, I'm going to tell you how I'm feeling and I really am going to open up, express it. With this uh, spirit showing me the Rider Waite Knight of Cups as well, there is also a very strong sexual energy between the two of you. And I know a lot of you will say the Knight of Cups isn't sexual. If you do have a look at that card in a different light and it has to be the Rider Waite, you will see him in a very different perspective. Okay, you'll see him in a different light. This might take you a little while to see it, but it's there. Uh, it's in the imagery, okay? So really strong emotions, very strong feelings. Um, spirit really clearly showing me Citrine on this spread as well. They just show me the crystal citrine. I don't have it right in, oh no, this is a, I don't have it right in front of me. This is a massive chunk of citrine crystal over here. And um, this can be to do with money and things like that and business and success, but it's also to do with confidence. So with them showing us citrine, with this card, this is the self-confidence being increased and heading towards success between you both. They're also showing me a yellow calcite. Um, so your connection is very much ruled by the um, solar plexus chakra. Okay, so it is all the confidence, it is all the uh, self-esteem and things like that. Um, you can get some yellow crystals, will really, really benefit the connection between you both. Um, you can even put them under your pillows, that's a smart move too. So there's a little bit of advice in that for you. The other cards that we've got over here, we've got the six of swords, we've got the two of pentacles and we've got the eight of pentacles. All right. So this is kind of a, 
at the moment it's not a stable connection but there is a focus on stability so with all these emotions there's also the fact that this relationship can hit stable ground but your person is kind of playing for time and that's why the six of swords has come into it perhaps you're not in contact perhaps they floated away from the connection that you're not speaking to each other maybe they're traveling at the moment also potentially traveling through work with the eight of pentacles that your person appears to have taken taken i couldn't get my words on them a step back from the connection why well that's where the two of pentacles come in your person is trying to find a balance over this so they've been really absorbed with the emotions of it all and they are really letting their heart to do the work but their head is trying to pull them in a direction that says look come on mate let's be a little bit more stable here your person you guys hasn't said to them that you're into them or if you have you haven't expressed it very clearly so they don't really know how you're feeling and what you're thinking and so they've vanished or taken a step back from the situation even if you're still in contact and they seem to have gone a little bit sparse it's really important actually that you do give them that away time now why well the away time with the eight of pentacles over here is meaning that they need to work through their shit okay once they've worked through their shit which is all of this pile and and they've realized that you know it's time to make these knight of cups move and it's time to say to you that they're really into you once they've worked through that this will happen timings let's look at a timing some of you guys i'm hearing a two really clearly so it's a two weeks two month okay it's not going to go up to a two year it's two week two month from the time that you watch this reading so if you're watching it um in a few months time those are the timings that you are looking at 222 also being a really important number of a relationship especially a spiritually grounded one so 222 coming into this and 20 seconds being important, seconds being important, two weeks, two months. Just remember that um, that is your collective timing. And if you want to look at individual timings, just give me a shout. So let's summarise it all at the end of the day, where you're going with this. What your person really wants you to know is they might have took a step back from the situation, but don't worry because they're working through their shit. Once they've worked through their shit, they're going to come towards you, express their emotions, tell you that they've fallen for you um, and express that vulnerability that perhaps you are looking for them to do. Um, they've often had to have a bit of a guard up, spirit just cutting in, a bit of a guard up, a bit of a wall because they don't like to feel vulnerable. Now with this and these three emotional cards up here, that will benefit um sorry there's just showing me the citrine again <laughs> that will happen okay so if you get some citrine it will really be beneficial to your situation um, and if you do want to look at the more kind of pagan roots and how we can help this connection work just give me a shout i'm starting to do ceremonies with you all and um, doing the druidry to help create and manifest but we can also do manifesting plans if you want to keep it a little bit more earthly but do have a look at citrine it will benefit you it will really, really vastly benefit you. Give them enough time, they'll bounce, they'll bounce back. And Spirit just finishing off that reading with an elastic band, okay? Um, if you haven't read Men Are From Mars, Women From Venus, it's a really good book for you to read. Um, again, I know it's, um, I'm going to say never sexually orientated, just gender specific, but you work with the energies. So male, female energies that are related to the tarot. So with that, with the elastic band, it speaks of the male energy kind of pulling away. They have to pull away and reach their maximum capacity till they bounce back. And do remember that. So if they are being a little bit dodgy with you and not giving you what you want, let them go. Let them pull away. And the elastic band or rubber band, uh, we call them elastic bands in England, will bounce back. All right, guys. So if you need me, just drop me a mastic. Mastic. I'm gonna drop me a mystic message. <laughs> mysticlovetarot at gmail.com. I love you all. I'll speak to you next week. Ciao, guys.